Welcome to the I Am Different series. If you've been around our program long enough, you notice that there's something different. I Am Third is not the world's way of doing things. In fact, as college basketball moves towards a me first narrative, we are doubling down on I Am Third. We want to take you behind the scenes and show you some of our former players who are doing big things in our world through I Am Third in the game of basketball. It's God first, other second, yourself third. The unique and cool thing about it is if you have that perspective, it comes back around to benefit you. Iwu Hoops presents The Pursuit. Go inside the locker room as Iwu Hoops trades the pursuit of me for the pursuit of three. Welcome to another episode of The Pursuit. I'm Jeff Clark, the associate head coach, and we're joined by 2018 National Championship point guard, Joel Okafer. We're down here in the Pacers facility. Why don't you just give an update on what you're doing now, what you've been doing the last few years? Uh, so, obviously, after I graduated, um, coached high school, um, college for a year, um, and then uh, got into the NBA as a team assistant, uh, for the past two years and uh, this summer just recently got promoted to assistant video coordinator so yeah that's that's been my uh life in a nutshell we love hearing the updates from the front office about just the difference you're making here and obviously getting the full-time promotion is a, yeah. a huge step in the nba so what was that moment like when it was you know you're with an nba team and then you're you're promoted in this way uh what was that moment like for you uh, it was great man uh, a lot of sacrifice um you know um the thing I try to focus on is, you know, the energy that I bring into the building. Um, you know, I think I kind of learned this about myself, you know, in college, just the, 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 the way I can impact a team uh, when I played. And then I also just kind of bring that into the professional world in the coaching, just bringing out of energy. And um, that's, uh, it's great to, to see these people recognize that and to, you know, elevate me in this, in the coaching Ward. So let's go back to your time. You said you, you learned that while you were playing. Let's go back to your, your years at Indiana Wesleyan. Yeah. What was the thing you learned about yourself, about basketball, uh, that, that's really carried forward in your life? Uh, so, you know, coming in from um, a year after Bradley uh, to Indiana Wesleyan, I, I would say uh, I, I, I knew I had energy towards me, but I just didn't know how to channel it the right way. Uh, into other people. Uh, so when I got to IWU, I remember, you know, the first few years, struggle. Um, but then once I figured it out and figured out that, you know, my energy is not just meant for me, it's meant for, to, to elevate people around me, it's to make people better. Uh, and that, you know, that's from the help of, you know, my teammates, you know, my coaches. Um, and I was able to to do that the rest of my time. And, um, and after I started doing that, you know, there was a lot more fun playing basketball. There was a lot more fun being around people. Um, it's just, you know, it's nice to, to, to get to know that about yourself. Um, so, yeah. So I want to go back to when you decided to come because you, you had been at Division One environment. You'd kind of been in some different AU environments. As you came in Indiana Westland, what was different as we're in this series about I am different? What was different about Indiana Westland as you stepped into that environment? I would say the community and just how much they um, rally behind you and try to help you succeed. Um, you know, before I came there, um, my, you know, the, the things that I've kind of done with people is about, you know, how can I help you? How can you help me um, type ways? Um, so when I got there, it was more, you know, how can you come together and, you know, help people get better um, and help the team get better and put, you know, put people first before, before you. Um, and, and I think that was probably, you know, the way I think coming in, and that was probably why, you know, when I first came to IWU, I had some struggles, and once I was able to figure that out, and it was actually, you know, it was a win-win situation. You know, people was winning, you know, um, people around the community was winning because they was watching us win a lot of basketball games, and we were doing it with fun, but also, you know, you know, just by seeing that, that was a win for me. I'm going back to that first year, and there were some challenges and some adjustments. Yeah. And some of it was our fault. You know, you weren't playing early on and we were having some frustration. And I remember when it clicked for you and you just said, because part of the I Am Third life is discovering who did God make me uniquely to be? 
right. and how do I use that for other people? And it was when that light bulb went on in your mind and then you get inserted in the starting lineup and the team just goes to another level. So what did you learn in that moment and how has that carried forward into your professional career now that you're in the NBA? Uh, there's one word that stick to me. I think you remember this. It's don't be timid. <laughs> yeah, uh, I can remember that. <laughs> uh, so I remember we had a conversation, you know, when I got, you know, inserted into the starting lineup. And, you know, one of the words you used for me was don't be timid. And which I think um, that's also another thing that I learned about myself is to always be free. Um, if I'm not free minded, um, I, you know, I, you know, I got tense up, you know, I'm, I'm inward, but when I'm, free-minded when I'm not timid. I'm more looking to help other people. I'm more looking to elevate other people. So I, I would say that's that's probably one of the biggest things, like looking backwards, that helped me uh, in that moment. Um, so, yeah. And I, I remember, because we were, there is this way that people evaluate players, mm -hmm. and that's mostly just about size, speed, skill, and not enough at intangible. Right. And it's when a player can learn What's the unique thing they bring and point that at the team? Then everybody elevates. And one of the fun things that's been watched with, with the journey of you and the other guys with the Pacers is the Pacers seem, seem to have that. Absolutely. Uh, Halliburton from the top, he gets joy in elevating other people. You saw in the Olympics. And to be in an organization in the NBA, uh, how have you seen that play out at the highest levels of basketball where approaching life differently, not for self, but for team, actually elevates everybody? Yeah, you just gave a great example. Um, Tyrese is, is, is one of the, probably one of the greatest in the NBA at doing that, you know, whether it's doing it on the court by, you know, getting guys where they need to be or also off the court. He's always trying to rally guys around. He's always talking to guys. He has a big smile about him, his energy when he, you know, meets people. So, like, I've seen that with the players in that way. Uh, I can go on and on with our guys. On, uh, but the coaches is just, you know, the joy they bring every day. Um, you know, they talk to you, they ask about your family you know, ask what's going on. Um, they, they rally around you when, you know, you have some struggles. They, they reach out to you, how can they help? So, uh, I mean, I can, I can go on, not just the coaching staff, but like even the, the strengths coach, um, down to our kitchen, to, you know, wh whatever that may be, our training staff uh, in the medical room, um, probably one of the best, uh, you know, making sure like they take care of you. And um, I was an intern the past two years, but, when I come in the training room, the, the, the attention to details that they, they um, pour into me is like I'm a player. Mm. So, you know, they never, you know, there's no position yet. You know, they, they try to elevate everybody. And I can say that even with the front office, just, you know, the attention to the details of what they do, um, the way they reach out to people, you know, they come out, they talk to you. Um, you know, I, I see these guys almost every day. Uh, you don't see that in a lot of organizations. Mm. You've obviously now been at the highest levels of basketball. You've seen coaching and everything. When you go back to Indiana Wesleyan, think of Coach Tonegal and the staff and the people there. What's, what's different? What, what level do you see there from the staff to the players and the type of people you're around at Indiana Wesleyan? Uh, I, I would say it's the care factor, just how much you guys care. Like, you know, I, I remember during my struggles, it, it wasn't just, the conversation wasn't just, you know, what's going on with, you know, your shooting or, you know, numbers and all that stuff. It was more like, what's going on with you? Like, how can we help you? Like, how can we pray for you? You know, like, how can we support you, you know, spiritually? And I think that's probably one of the, the biggest difference, um, you know, from you guys and, you know, a lot of coaches I've kind of been around. So, um, and I think that goes a long way because, you know, I'm already struggling through basketball. And if you ask me more about basketball, then it doesn't even make me think. And, you know, the word is don't be timid. So I want to be free. And um, for you to ask about me, you know, emotional being, spiritual being, um, that helps me get out of my own head. That helps me focus on the people around me and don't miss the moments. One of the things that, that we've appreciated is you're willing to do anything for Indiana Westland. If it's get on a phone with a guy or watch video or um, you just you're busy in the NBA, but you right. keep giving back. What's what's led you continue to just give back in both small and large ways to the, the program? Man, you know, as I you know as I got into coaching, it's just uh you know just learn to love to teach and to help others, um, and also it's just a way for me to come uh, to you know connect with the IWU guys. Like I want to know the new guys that are coming. I want to have that relationship, and you know, it goes back to my time there. The relationship was pretty big. Like I still talk to you know all my teammates, still communicate with, with you guys, the coaches. So it's 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 that for me, um, helping them learn. 
Uh, that's that's kind of how now I'm transforming my energies. How can I help them be the better version of themselves? Like, how can I help them, you know, average a little bit more? How can I help them know, like, yo, like, this guy is hoping or this is where you need to be attacking, like, all that little stuff. Um, how can I help them do that? And, you know, for them, I'm, I'm sure for them, they thinking, like, if you can spend time out of your day to show them fame, like, they show, like, you know, care about them. So. That's 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 what it is for me. Um, it's, it's just helping guys learn. So last question. You run into an NBA player and they said, you played in Indiana Wesleyan. What makes that place different? You got to give them a one to two sentence response. What's different about Indiana Wesleyan? I would say the community. Uh, the community is big. And I would say that they care about you deeply than, than basketball. Hmm. Yeah. Good word. Well, yep. Joel, we're proud of you. Thanks, man. We're, yeah. we're rooting you and the Pacers on. Thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, man. appreciate it, coach.